So welcome to this coffee lecture. My name is Erik Amsler. I am a subject librarian for geosciences and chemistry. I will give you a short insight into SciFinder, and I think it can be a useful tool for every scientist. So what actually is SciFinder? It is a very comprehensive database for chemistry mostly. It contains information about chemical substances, chemical structures and their properties, chemical reactions, and also the supplier of these chemical compounds can be found and patents. It is maintained by the Chemical Abstract Service, which is a division of the American Chemical Society. The contents are curated by people. It is the largest human, cur uh, human curated collection of scientific data. And the contained scientific data is mostly related to chemistry, but also it covers a wide range of other subjects like life sciences, material sciences, medicine, engineering, earth sciences, physics, and geography, etc. This is what I want to show you today, that SciFinder can be useful for reference searches for every scientist, even if you're not a chemist. So SciFinder is licensed by the University Library of Bern. So as an affiliate of the university, you have access to this database. And to get started, before you can access SciFinder, you need to register first using your University of Bern account. This is an overview of the search interface. I don't want to mention everything, just a few things. At the top, there are the functions where you can access alerts that you have set and the search history can be um, retrieved as well. On the left side, you can choose what you want to search through. So you can specifically search for substances or reactions or also for suppliers of a specific chemical compound. This is for a more chemical search. And then there is the reference search that, we'll, that we will look at in, in a bit, which can also cover a broader, uh, broader subjects. In the advanced search, you can add fields which are connected with the usual Boolean operators. Also, you can use the drawing tool, the structure editor, where you can add chemical structures and combine it with a keyword search. This is the search interface in a reference search after you have run a query. So within the results, you can review indexed substances or indexed reactions and also the forward citations of the results. Then the results can be sorted in a certain way. The default is by relevance and you can also change how the results are displayed. Since it is easier to show how SciFinder itself how it works um, in itself and how to conduct a reference search, I will switch now to the online version. So this should be visible now. So let's say I am an environmental scientist and I'm interested in um, how plastics are degraded bio biologically in the environment. So here I enter the query biodegradation and plastics and environment. So with this search, you access more than a hundred years of published documents from journals, patents, conferences, and more. So sometimes it takes a little bit of time to get the results. And I see I get a fair amount of results, 1,300 um, hits. And um, it's sorted by relevance. You can also change that, um, for example, to time cited or the publication date. And also you can show the results like the partial abstract as it is now or with no abstract and only the, the basic bio, uh, biographical information or the full abstract. So let's keep it for the partial abstracts. On the left side, there are all the filters and refining options of the search on this side in one column. For example, as in other database or database um, search tools, 
There is the document type. You can filter by, for example, reviews or journal articles, but you can also exclude by the document types that you do not want. Then with a rather broad topic, like for example, biodegradation and plastics environment, you would want to have, um, or you, you would want quickly to get a better idea of the topics that are covered in your answer set, in the whole answer set, and that you can do with the concept filter. So every document in SciFinder has been indexed by scientists that is working for CIS and they extract, or the scientists, they extract substances and reactions from these scientific documents and assign concepts or keywords in a very systematic way. So we can view all of the concepts that are found in, the, in this answer set. So for example, in the top count, this means um, the, the concepts here are the ones that, that um, arise most in the answer set. So the number in parentheses, you see how many references of the answer set have this specific concept assigned. So of course, biodegradation, plastic, um, environmental biodegradation are in the very top because those were also the concepts that I used in my search. But I can see when I go down, okay, polyesters that are um, different kind of plastics, polymers, um, are also um, uh, relevant. I see bacteria, they play a role in the biodegradation, microorganisms. Okay, so with these concepts, I can refine my search. Okay, I see toxicity is something that I want to look further into. I'm interested um, how these biodegrading um, particles of plastic will um, affect the, um, the environment. So I can either choose it here, or I can also search specifically for toxic um, and here I can use these placeholders like the asterisk. So it will look or it will find toxic, but also toxicity, toxicology, etc. So these are concepts that I would want to add to my query. So I add all of these. Maybe I also add ecotoxicology. I saw that um, the bacteria there um, are relevant. Okay, there are quite a few types of bacteria, aerobic, um, anaerobic, but this is a bit too specific for me to choose now. So I will not select any of these and I will just keep the 15 selected compounds concepts from before and apply it to the search. So here you see that in the search, these 15 concepts have been selected as well. And with this rather general query, when you start with that, and then checked in the concepts, you can view the specific subconcepts, so to say, that cover or that are covered across your whole answer set. And this allows you to go directly to the most relevant answers for you or that you're interested in. And also it can provide you with suggestions for a follow-up query if you go through these concepts that you find in your answer set. So you should know that the concepts that you choose from, from from this list that you look at, they are linked with the Boolean operator or. So when I, for example, say, okay, I want to look at the environment that is not the soil environment, but rather um, the aquatic environment, maybe marine or aquatic, then I should not go back to the concepts and choose in the concepts marine, but there's a possibility that you can search within all of the results and you can enter marine or aquatic. So they will be added to the search, to the whole search and not with the or operator. So I see I have um, limited the results and they seem to be um, interesting for, for my search. 
Um, let's look at one specifically, maybe this one. You see it's a, it's a review. You can access the full text here if it is available. And at the bottom, you see the concepts that are assigned to this document, like the microplastic environment, bodies of water that would be covered by the aquatic system, and then also substances that are relevant in this document. So you even see the, the structures, the chemical structures, and if I click on one of those, you see the, um, the details of the structure. You can get the bioactivity data, um, reactions that um, this compound plays a role. And you can also synthesize if you're interested in that and see which suppliers provide this um, compound. Also, you can change the structure with edit. You can um, draw in this compound. Here, I will not do it. I will just quickly say, okay, you can add things. You can add um, elements like this. All right. So if I'm happy with the results that I got, I can also, as in any other database, I can choose some references of the result and I can download it either as a PDF or for citation as an RIS file or as a text file. There's a possibility to send the results via email to a colleague or to myself. And also I can save a search query. I can give a name, for example, plastic biodegradation, and then I can add tags that I have um, entered before, or I can attach a new tag and I can save this. If I want to get an alert, if another reference is available, I can also set alerts, for example, every week. And when I save it, I see in this flag, this, um, the search has been saved successfully. And here it's possible to see all the saved items. Either you can rerun these searches or also edit them in the ones that you have saved. And automatically in SciFinder, every search that you have done is saved in the search history. They just don't have an assigned name. So doing a reference search like this in a rather general or broad topic first, and then refining with concepts and uh, searches within the results. With this, SciFinder is actually a powerful alternative to other references or reference databases for natural sciences. And it has the additional benefit of connecting these searches with chemical compounds. If you work with um, chemical compounds, this is very useful. So I'll quickly go back to the presentation. I just want to quickly mention an additional CIS solution which we have access to. And this is CIS analytical methods. And this addition or this solution should make it easier to browse and find methods across different fields of study and with experimental details and step-by-step -step protocols. So it should really show you the detailed step or steps that you have to take in the lab, or it can be really useful if you don't have to look or scroll through all the references and, and read through the references through the method section, but really they have step-by-step -step descriptions of methods. For more information about SciFinder, and if you want more detailed information, you're welcome to check the CIS website. There are also online learning materials, like webinars that, are, that were recorded. And for more training and support, you can check there. So for those 
were new to SciFinder, and also if you're not a chemist or, or you are a chemist, try the reference searches. I would encourage you to do so. Maybe you want to combine this with, um, with chemical compounds or with structures. Um, you can refine the search with the concepts in your answer set and also modify your query accordingly. Just be sure to register first with your email address of the university, otherwise you will not be able to access the database. So this was the short introduction of the reference searches in SciFinder N, and thank you. Now there's some time for questions if you have any.